Hey folks, here are five side hustles that I don't think enough people are talking about, but literally anyone can start and could potentially land you up to $100 extra a day in your pocket. This first one's interesting. So let me ask you, you ever been for a nice leisurely stroll around your neighborhood, but then next thing you know, you're playing a game of Minesweeper. In one wrong step, you look down and it's the forbidden chocolate on your shoe. Or maybe as you're strolling, you look around your neighbor's yards and you see they're littered with all these inedible Snickers bars. If you answered yes to either, then there's a money-making opportunity here for you. Pooper picker upper. So the opportunity here is looking for big lawns with a lot of poop on them and you go and pick it up. And looking online, someone was charging anywhere from $35 to $65 per lawn. And as far as time, it would take them anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes. So we do some quick back and napkin math. Let's say we're really good at what we do. We charge $50 per yard. We pick up four yards a day and we do it over five days. That right there is $1,000 a week. So how much would it cost to start this side hustle? Well, I think it's actually pretty cheap. So let's go ahead and pop open Amazon. You search dog poop bags and we're gonna go with the Amazon basics packs. Now, maybe you could charge a premium for recyclable ones. I don't know, but let's go with the basic ones. And it looks like here, doing out the math, it costs less than two to three cents per bag. How to get started on this side hustle. The first one is pretty straightforward. Go to your local Facebook marketplace, wherever you live, and just post that you will pick up poop in people's yards. That's it. You put out the ad and see who responds. The second option you have is door knocking. So go to some of the wealthier neighborhoods that look like they might have some poop scattered in their front lawn or maybe in their backyard and offer your services. You see, the thing with rich people is they really value their time. And for them, picking up poop might not be something on the top of their priority list if they could use that time to go make more money. And so you identify the gap in the marketplace of, hey, you're pretty wealthy, you might not have time or you don't care to pick up the poop in your yard, but yet maybe your neighbors would care if you picked up the poop in your yard. Let me help you fill that gap, pay me 50 bucks, I'll do your lawn, and potentially you could get them on a subscription service. Say, hey, listen, every week I'll come back and pick up your lawn, and then you start building up a book of business. Now, is this the sexiest side hustle? No, absolutely not. You're picking up poop. But as somebody who has two dogs, there may or may not have been a day or two where I've let my dogs go on the front lawn and I thought, you know, I'm gonna get it tomorrow. I'm gonna get it the next day. If someone had actually jumped in and said, hey, I'll pick up your poop once a week, this set rate, I probably would consider it to be perfectly honest. It just isn't something that I particularly enjoy doing, even though I know that I should. The next side hustle we have on the list involves shopping. Let me ask you, you ever walk into a fast food restaurant and you go in there and it's just an absolute disaster. Like someone came in, they closed their eyes and they just sprayed and prayed hoping to hit the urinal. Then as you turn around to go wash your hands, there's a little button there that says, were you satisfied or was this bathroom clean? And you just slap absolutely not. Well, there's a side hustle that could actually get you paid to give that feedback. It's called mystery shopping. Now, it's not limited to just telling a restaurant whether or not their bathroom is clean, but really it's about quality control and quality assurance for any sort of services-based industry. So that could be going into a fast food restaurant and rating the food. That could also be going and buying a high-end luxury watch and rating the sales associate and everything in between. And getting started is really straightforward. The services that I have used in the past are Bestmark and IntelliShop. You go on and apply, and I've really never heard of anyone getting rejected. What you should know about mystery shopping though is you start out at a base tier, and as you do more shops, and as your shopper rating, basically your accuracy, your reliability, the detail of your reporting gets better, you get better and better shops. So when I was first doing mystery shopping, I was doing a ton of Five Guys shops. I literally walk into a Five Guys, and then I would go and rate the food. Was the burger juicy yet crisp? Were the fries crispy yet mushy on the inside? Like that type of stuff. It was actually pretty cool and I got paid about 10 to 15 bucks per shop, including my meal. Another mystery shop I did was going to car dealerships and pretending that I wanted to buy a car and then I would go back and rate the sales associate on how they tried to sell me. And trust me, car buying is very, very scripted. I mean, you go in, you do a test drive, you come back, they give you an offer and you say, no, no, thank you. And then they're supposed to go and get their manager. They give you another offer and then you say, no, thank you. And then you're allowed to leave, which was interesting. But again, never really bought a car and those actually paid pretty well, anywhere from 30 to about $50 per shop. So once you get accepted on IntelliShop and Bestmark, you're just going to go on and take a look at the job boards. You set your parameter of how far you're willing to travel for it, and you just wait. Now, when you first start out, I'll be honest, the jobs are so-so. One of the ones that I see a lot early starting out is doing oil changes for owning a particular vehicle. So you, literally you go get your oil change, they pay for the oil change, and they'll pay you 20 to $30 on top of it for doing it, and then you go and rate them. The startup for this side hustle is nothing. Now, ideally though, you do have a car you can get around, but if you don't and you're in a city, that could be doable. However, if you're in the suburbs without reliable transport, it could be difficult hitting multiple shops in one day. Now, as for earnings potential, take a look at this email I got a few weeks back. This was for a Chanel perfume shop. 35 bucks, which I assume you go in, you ask the sales associate a couple questions, they try to sell you, you just kind of remember what they're trying to say to you and you go back and you fill out a review and that's it.
Typically though, I see jobs are gonna range anywhere from 10 up to 75, maybe even $100, all depending on A, your level, where you start, and also how much time is involved in the shop. However, when I say time, there are certain shops where you literally can sit at home and make calls. There's one a few months back where you were just calling into local storage units and just asking them questions about setting up a storage unit. And that was paying anywhere from 10 to 15 bucks, largely because you could just sit at home and make a call and that was it. However, the ones that are gonna be more involved, for example, going in, test driving a car, they're gonna pay more, right? 30, 40, 50 bucks at times. For mystery shopping, it totally depends on how much effort you're gonna put in, how many jobs you wanna pick up. I'd say though, most folks will probably get $50 a job, probably do three jobs a day, so you're looking at about $750 a week. The next side hustle takes advantage of the fact that Americans love their junk. Like, really, really love their junk. All that junk inside that, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But really though, there's a way to take advantage of that. So there's two ways to help folks who like storing stuff everywhere. One, storage units. You probably see them all over the place. They're just these lockers. You go, you store stuff, you pay some set amount of dollars per month, and you kind of largely forget about it. Now, personally, as a real estate investor, investing in storage units is something I'm very interested in. However, pretty high barrier to entry if you have no idea what you're doing. All you know is you wanna help people store stuff. But the second way is potentially a lot more attractive to a lot more people where basically you just have space in your house. Let's say you have a basement. Let's say you have an extra bedroom, a driveway, whatever it is, you can just rent it out to people. And this is where neighbor.com comes in. To get started on neighbor.com is pretty straightforward. Think of it like Airbnb, but instead of renting to people who will come and live in your space, you're just renting it to people stuff who will live in your space doing nothing. You go on, make a profile, and quite literally whatever extra space you might have, you can list. Now, of course, some is gonna be more attractive than the others. For example, if you have something that's indoors, that's climate controlled, you could probably charge a little bit more versus just say, hey, I've got an extra driveway. You can store a vehicle there or a boat there. But either way, the startup costs for neighbor.com are $0. I went on neighbor.com to see what's available in my local area. And lo and behold, there's a ton of offerings for people to store stuff. And taking a look at this one, it's just the next room in someone's house. And what you should expect is that you could probably get anywhere from 100 to 200 bucks per month for someone to just store some boxes in there. Now, if you have a big house or a storage space that's particularly attractive to folks, you could probably do maybe two or three different people's storage at your place, easily netting you four, five, or $600 a month that you otherwise wouldn't have had and you didn't have to do anything for it. Literally nothing. You list your space, someone puts their stuff in and you say, thank you very much and collecting your check. The next side hustle is for all my pet lovers out there. Now, as somebody who has two adorable corgis, but also someone who travels a good amount, this year in 2023, I've had to really think seriously of what to do when I travel. I certainly don't wanna drop my dogs off at a kennel, and I know my parents are more than happy to watch my dogs, but I also know that they probably aren't too happy that I'm always dropping them off. And so this is where Rover comes in. Rover is a service where people go and offer to watch your pets, whether you bring your pet to them or they come to your house. And getting started is very straightforward. You go on rover.com, you click sign up, you apply, and voila, you've done a listing. Now, as for charge rate, it varies greatly depending on how much effort is required on your end. It could be as simple as you go on and you go over to walk someone's dog when they're away or feed their cat, or they drop their pet with you and you only watch their pet and have no other pets. As far as bench earnings though, it could range anywhere from an extra thousand dollars a month if you're just doing it part-time, maybe just doing the dog walking part, to well over $3,000 a month if this is something you're dedicating your time to doing full-time. And as just a quick ask, if there are any Rover participants in the Boston area who would like to take care of two adorable corgis, feel free to comment down below. And the last side hustle I have for you is helping companies sell stuff. Now, I don't mean knocking on the door and selling something, but actually just recommending something and getting a percentage of what gets sold. Specifically, this is known as affiliate marketing. And this is actually something I do myself. The world of affiliate marketing is wide. In fact, we could probably dedicate an entire video session talking about it. So I'm gonna try to boil the ocean a little bit and get to kind of what I think are the most lucrative opportunities in affiliate marketing. So you have twofold. You can either recommend physical products or you could talk about digital products. The physical product side is via Amazon. Go sign up with an Amazon Associates website and then you can get a tracking link for pretty much any product on there. And so when you recommend a product, let's say the poop bags we were talking about earlier, you could get a percentage of the sales of those bags. However, with recommending products, you do wanna think about, well, is this a product A that's gonna pay me? And is this a product that I can actually generate volume on? So there's a balance there, but Amazon Associates is pretty straightforward to get set up to recommending physical products. On the flip side of it, you also have things, I would, I guess, argue they might be digital products, though not in the print sense, but more so think of things like financial products or travel products. 
So then I would recommend you take a look at CJ.com as well as impact.com. You go on, you sign up to be an affiliate there. You can sort through all of the different companies and products that they have. So for example, on impact.com, we see here a holy affiliate that you can go ahead and apply for. And if you get accepted, you will get 10% of all the sales that someone purchases when they use your affiliate link and shop on holy. On the flip side though, with CJ.com, I think they have way better financial products. So think of things like credit cards or savings accounts. You might actually just get a flat fee of 50, 100, 100 $150 if someone signs up for one of the recommended products that you have on the list. Now, the most important thing with affiliate marketing is achieving some sort of top of funnel marketing arm. For me, before January of 2021, I had zero presence on social media. Within two years, I now have an audience of over 3 million across TikTok, Instagram, as well as YouTube. And we are so close to touching 100,000 subscribers. It's absolutely insane. And with a large top of market funnel, it sets me up well to recommend affiliate products. You're probably thinking there, well, John, I don't have 3 million aggregate subscribers. And that's perfectly valid because two years ago, I was in your exact same shoes. So here's my recommendation for someone who is just starting fresh out. Step one. Figure out your niche. What are you passionate about? What do you like doing? What do you like talking about, thinking about, recommending? And when you kind of figure that out, get specific. For example, I like tech. Okay, great, but what, what kind of tech? Do you like talking about computers? Do you like talking about headphones? Can you get even more granular? I specifically like talking about apples or specifically like talking about PCs or specifically like talking about Bose. Get very granular because that's gonna pay off tenfold when it comes to a product recommendation because it's gonna be a lot more natural than, hey, listen, I like tech and I'm gonna put every single Amazon affiliate link for all the tech out there in the world and just hope someone will click it might be a little bit more difficult. Step two, figure out what platform you're going to be on that you're gonna talk about affiliate marketing. Is it gonna be traditionally a website, maybe like a blog, or maybe YouTube, such as here, or maybe a short form like Instagram or TikTok or a newsletter or a podcast. There's so many different content platforms, but figure out the one that's gonna work for you. Next, you're gonna to wanna to start making content. So whether it's gonna be writing articles, writing newsletters, creating that podcast, creating videos, start making the content. And I would say when you first start, don't just blast out your affiliate links. When you first start, really deliver value to your audience, build that sense of trust, and also build yourself as a domain area expert of whatever niche that it is that you're in. After you've been making content for a little bit, then go ahead and start applying to the various affiliate networks I mentioned earlier. Now, those are just some examples, CJ, Impact, as well as Amazon Associates, but there are affiliates for quite literally anything you can imagine. And the final step is driving eyeballs to your content. Now, if you have a website, that might be things like SEO, or it could be potentially putting out paid advertisements out there to drive traffic. If you're creating content though, it's obviously a lot more organic. It's gonna come down to making really, really good content that resonates with your audience that ultimately delivers them value. Of course, if we look at all these steps, yeah, it seems straightforward, right? Step one, step two, step three, but I will tell you, it is gonna be a bit of a grind. It's not gonna be next day, flip the switch, we're making 10,000, 20,000, $50,000 a month. However, those numbers are possible. It's just gonna take time to ramp up. And once you kind of get ramped up, I would say affiliate marketing of all the side hustles we talked about earlier is one of the more passive ones because, hey, listen, you created the content, you created the video, it's out there, your recommendations are out there, and you will get a cut of whatever the audience ultimately purchases from you or your website. And that is a wrap on today's phenomenal video. Folks, I appreciate you all tuning in. If you have comments, questions, concerns, side hustles that I didn't talk about, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. And I'll catch you all next week. Peace.